In this video, we're going to talk about a basic mathematical operation called exponentiation. What is exponentiation? Exponentiation is a mathematical operation between two numbers. It is written as a number b with a superscript n, pronounced as b raised to n, b to the power of n, or b to the nth power. The number b is called base, and the superscript n is called exponent. The result of this operation, x, is called the nth power. The meaning of this operation depends on what type of number are the operands. In this video, we will define exponentiation when the exponent is a positive integer, when the exponent is 0, when the exponent is a negative integer, and when the exponent is a fraction, given that the base is a real number. Let's start with a positive integer. When the exponent is a positive integer, exponentiation means repeated multiplication. The operation b raised to n means n copies of b multiplied together. For example, 2 raised to 3 equals 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 3 raised to 5 equals 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 equals 243. 7 raised to 1 equals 7. 1 half raised to 2 equals 1 half times 1 half equals 1 fourth. Negative 2 raised to 4 equals negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals 16. The exponent tells how many copies of the base are to be multiplied together. When the exponent is raised to 2, it is said to be squared. So 1 half raised to 2 is also pronounced as 1 half squared. When the exponent is raised to 3, it is said to be cubed. So 2 raised to 3 is also pronounced as 2 cubed. Now you may ask what does it mean when the exponent is 0 or negative? But before we answer that, we need to know one property of exponents. Let's say we have b raised to m times b raised to n. That is, two exponential expressions with the same base multiplied together. If the exponents are positive integers, then this means we have m copies of b multiplied together times n copies of b multiplied together. So in total, how many copies of b are there? There are m plus n copies of b multiplied together. So if there are m plus n copies of b multiplied together, that means b is raised to m plus n. This leads us to the following property of exponents. The product of two exponential expressions with the same base is equal to the base raised to the sum of the exponents. b raised to m times b raised to n equals b raised to m plus n. Now let's verify by example. Let's evaluate 2 raised to 4 times 2 raised to 2. This is equal to 4 2's multiplied together times two twos multiplied together. This is equal to 16 times 4, and 16 times 4 is 64. Now let's evaluate 2 raised to 4 plus 2, or 2 raised to 6. This equals 6 twos multiplied together, which is equal to 64. Now we will use this property to define the meaning of zero and negative integer exponents. Let's say we have 3 raised to 0 times 3 squared. Now by property of product of powers, this is 3 raised to 0 plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, so we have 3 squared. 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So therefore, 3 raised to 0 times 3 squared is equal to 9. 
or 3 raised to 0 times 9 equals 9. But for this equation to be true, then what must be the value of 3 raised to 0 so that when multiplied to 9 gives 9? That value is 1, because any number multiplied to 1 equals the number. So therefore, 3 raised to 0 must be equal to 1. This leads us to the following definition. Any non-zero number raised to 0 is equal to 1. For example, 2 raised to 0 equals 1. Negative 1 third raised to 0 equals 1. 0 0.67 raised to 0 equals 1. 5 over 7 raised to 0 equals 1. Negative 6 raised to 0 equals 1. But take note that 0 raised to 0 is undefined. Now let's define the meaning of negative integer exponents. Now let's say we have 5 cubed times 5 raised to negative 3. By property, this is 5 raised to 3 minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, so we have 5 raised to 0. And we know that 5 raised to 0 is 1. So therefore, 5 cubed times 5 raised to negative 3 is equal to 1. But for this equation to be true, then what must be the value of 5 raised to negative 3 so that when multiplied with 5 cubed gives 1? That value is the reciprocal of 5 cubed, which is 1 over 5 cubed, because any non-zero number multiplied by its reciprocal equals 1. So therefore, 5 raised to negative 3 must be equal to 1 over 5 cubed. This leads us to the following definition. Any non-zero number b raised to negative n, where n is a positive integer, is equal to 1 over b raised to n. For example, 3 raised to negative 1 equals 1 over 3 raised to 1 equals 1 third. 2 raised to negative 3 equals 1 over 2 raised to 3 equals 1 over 8. Negative 5 raised to negative 2 equals 1 over the square of negative 5 equals 1 over 25. But take note that 0 raised to negative integer is undefined. So now we know the meaning of exponentiation when the exponent is an integer. But, but before we discuss fractional exponents, we need to know two concepts. The first concept that we need to know is the power of a power. Let's say we have b raised to m, and then we raise it to n. Now if m and n are positive integers, then this means we have m copies of b multiplied together times another m copies of b multiplied together times another m copies of b multiplied together and so on until we have n groups of m copies of b so if there are n groups of m copies of b then there are a total of m times n copies of b and if there are m times n copies of b, then that means b is raised to m times n. This leads us to another property of exponents. A base raised to exponent raised to exponent is equal to the base raised to the product of exponents. b raised to m raised to n equals b raised to m times n. Let's verify by example. Let's evaluate the square of 3 cubed. This is equal to the square of 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. So we have 27 squared. 27 squared is 27 times 27. And 27 times 27 is 729. Now let's evaluate 3 raised to 3 times 2, or 3 raised to 6. This equals 
3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 729. And we are done with the first concept. The second concept that we need to know is the concept of nth root. An nth root of x is a number b which, when raised to a positive integer n, gives the number x. That is, if b raised to n equals x, then b is an nth root of x. For example, if 3 squared equals 9, then 3 is the second root of 9, because 3 is a number that when raised to 2 gives 9. If 5 cubed equals 125, then 5 is the third root of 125, because 5 is a number that when raised to 3 gives 125. If 2 raised to 4 equals 16, then 2 is the fourth root of 16, because 2 is a number that when raised to 4 gives 16. The second and third root have special names. We call the second root as square root, and we call the third root as cube root. Now we will introduce a symbol that indicates the nth root. This symbol is called the radical symbol or radical sign. The radical symbol has two types, this one and this one. The first one means positive square root of, while the second one means nth root of. Using this symbol, we can write the nth root as follows. If b is an nth root of x, then b equals nth root of x. In this case, the number inside the radical sign is called radicand n is called index, and the result b is called nth root. But there is one important condition. If the index is even, then the radicand and root must be greater or equal to 0. For example, the square root of 25 equals 5, because 5 squared equals 25. The cube root of negative 8 equals negative 2 because negative 2 cubed equals negative 8. The fourth root of 1 over 81 equals 1 third, because 1 third raised to 4 equals 1 over 81. But, take note of the following. Although the square of negative 5 is 25, the square root of 25 is not equal to negative 5 because the square root symbol is defined for positive square root only. So whenever we use the square root symbol, it always means the positive square root. Also, the square root of negative 4, fourth root of negative 81, sixth root of negative 64, and all other even roots of numbers less than 0 are undefined in the context of real numbers. And now we are done with the second concept. We are now ready to define the meaning of fractional exponents. To give meaning to fractional exponents, let's say we have the cube of 8 raised to 1 third. By the property of power of a power, this is 8 raised to the product of 1 third and 3. 1 third times 3 equals 1. So we have 8 raised to 1, which is 8. So therefore, the cube of 8 raised to 1 third equals 8. But if that's so, then 8 raised to 1 third must be the third root of 8. Because 8 raised to 1 third is a number that when raised to 3 gives 8. So therefore, 8 raised to 1 third must be equal to the cube root of 8. This leads us to the following definition. A number x raised to 1 over n, where n is a positive integer, means the nth root of x. For example, 8 raised to 1 third equals cube root of 8 equals 2. 100 raised to 1 half equals square root of 100 equals 10. 16 raised to 1 fourth equals fourth root of 16 equals 2. 
but what does it mean when the numerator is not 1? In general, if we have b raised to m over n, we can write this as b raised to 1 over n, then raised to m. Now we know that b raised to 1 over n is the nth root of b. So this is nth root of b raised to m. Alternatively, we can write b raised to m, then raised to 1 over n. And this means the nth root of b raised to m. And this leads us to the following definition. A number x raised to m over n in lowest term, where m is an integer and n is a positive integer, means the nth root of x then raised to m, or x raised to m then get the nth root. For example, 9 raised to 3 over 2 equals the cube of 9 raised to 1 half equals cube of square root of 9 equals cube of 3 equals 27. Or, alternatively, 9 raised to 3 then raised to 1 half equals 729 raised to 1 half equals square root of 729 equals 27. If the numerator is negative, then 9 raised to negative 3 over 2 equals 9 raised to 1 half, then raised to negative 3, equals square root of 9, then raised to negative 3, equals 3 raised to negative 3, equals 1 over 3 raised to 3, equals 1 over 27. Or, alternatively, 9 raised to negative 3, then raised to 1 half, equals 1 over 9 cubed, then raised to 1 half, equals 1 over 729, raised to 1 half, equals square root of 1 over 729, equals 1 over 27. But, take note of the following. Let's say we have negative 100 raised to 1 half, and negative 100 raised to 2 over 4. Now, negative 100 raised to 1 half is equal to square root of negative 100, which is undefined. But negative 100 raised to 2 over 4 equals fourth root of square of negative 100 equals fourth root of 10,000 equals 10. So therefore, although 1 half is equivalent to 2 over 4, we see that negative 100 raised to 1 half is not equal to negative 100 raised to 2 over 4. This is the reason why we emphasize the term lowest term in the definition. So whenever we deal with fractional exponents, we should always simplify the fraction in lowest term. And that is the meaning of fractional exponents. Now let's have a quick summary of what we learned in this video. Positive integer exponent means repeated multiplication. Any non-zero number raised to zero is defined to be one. Negative integer exponent means reciprocal of repeated multiplication. When the exponent is a fraction, the denominator means root and the numerator means power. And that is the meaning of exponentiation. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.